Hello everyone, my name is Alan Halperin. I'm a recently retired internal medicine physician from the University of Florida College of Medicine in Jacksonville. And throughout my career, I've been interested in the role patients can play in preventing and treating chronic diseases that, that they might develop. In a lot of medicine, we practice what we call crisis medicine, where we're very good at treating um, acute conditions such as heart attacks, but not very good at the prevention part. How can we promote our own self-care to lead healthier and ha happier lives? Now, everyone in their lives is confronted by stress. And these stresses can be psychological stresses, such as worries about what happened in the past or what might happen in the future, finances, houses. Living in life makes it impossible to not uh, experience these stressors. But in addition, we have stressors on our, on our bodies that occur from chronic diseases, such as diabetes, heart disease, strokes, and cancer. Fortunately, there's an antidote to stress. That is self-care. Now, self-care can be di loosely divided into three different categories, physical, spiritual, and emotional. But these are not separate and distinct. And examples from one uh, usually are present in, in all three dimensions of, of health. Let's start with talking about exercise. We used to believe that exercise, uh, the only good form of exercise was aerobic exercise where you got your heart rate up jogging or on a bicycle in a gym, uh, keeping it up there for 30 minutes and doing that a few times a week. And if you did that, you would be considered um, healthy as far as exercise goes. But now we know that exercise is far more than that. You do not have to go belong to a gym to, be, to get exercise. You can get exercise by walking in nature. You can get exercise by um, um, doing Tai Chi or yoga. They all have different uh, functions. And the functions are to keep our body moving. And when it does, a series of events occur in our body that um, kind of calm down our nervous system and allow us uh, to have a healthier metabolism. There have been many studies now that show that people who get regular exercise generally have healthier lives uh, and are more, have less stress in their life. There was a study done here in Jacksonville that compared people with anxiety either being uh, assigned to a exercise group where they exercise uh, three to four times a week, or to a medication group where they gave traditional pharmaceuticals for depression. And what they found is that both were effective, which is surprising to people. So in addition to its uh, effect on our psychological and, and metabolic well-being, um, exercise also helps our, our spiritual well-being especially if you exercise in nature, like in a beautiful place where we are now in Dutton Island. People who uh, regularly get out in nature generally have less anxiety, de depression, and better quality of life. The Japanese have a, a term that they use called forest bathing. And in forest bathing, they uh, encourage in their religious practices to get out into nature and just be, to walk, to sit, to uh, uh, be present in nature. And this is part of the fabric of their, of their existence and becomes part of their life. So exercise then is a form of self-care that we can use to aid our psychological, physical, and spiritual well-being. Unfortunately, most people do not exercise. Another self-care practice is nutrition. We all obviously need to eat to maintain our existence, uh, but what we eat is extremely important and is an active area of, of, of research and very confusing because sometimes uh, results are presented 
in, in ways that, that conflict. But the preponderance of belief and evidence is that eating a plant-based diet is, should be the foundation of your, of, your, of your eating. There are many variations of this, including the, the Mediterranean diet, vegetarian diet, uh, vegan diet, but that should be the mainstay of your, um, your health and your nutrition. Meats um, are okay, but should be used in, in moderation and, and infrequently, if used at all. Eating a healthy diet that's plant-based has shown in many studies to, show, to reveal that our bodies are healthier. We have less high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, and cholesterol. Eating a diet that's, that's healthy is, is better for the environment because we don't have to use a lot of land and, and chemicals that are used to grow meat and, and poultry. So in addition to the nutritional value, it's good, it's good for the environment. Eating a diet that is plant-based reduces inflammation in our body, which we think is important in uh, reducing uh, the chronic diseases that I, that I mentioned before. So you can, when we eat, uh, we frequently don't think about how we eat, but uh, often it's uh, rushed. We eat dinner, gobble it down, and move on to something else. But you can eat in a mindful way. And people who do that tend to eat less, they tend to lose weight more, and have better uh, nutritional uh, health than those that, those that don't. Other examples of self-care that are uh, important are uh, sleep, we now know that if you don't get enough sleep, you're more prone to chronic diseases. Also, exercising our minds is important. Uh, being engaged in our lives, um, learning uh, new subjects such as foreign languages, and uh, reading and having discussion groups about uh, books and ideas all leads to uh, a better, uh, better physical mental and spiritual health. The other, another category is spiritual uh, self-care. Good relationships with friends and family is really important to health. A number of years ago, there were studies in people who developed heart disease, and they found that, that people who had uh, more positive relationships with, with family and friends who were married and had good relationships with their spouse had less heart, heart disease. And this was discounted for a number of years, thinking that it was just some statistical quirk because the relationships were as strong for these factors as were what your cholesterol was or what your blood pressure or blood sugar were. So now we know that um, having uh, these relationships definitely improves health, and it probably does it through calming down our nervous system. So another way of en enhancing our spiritual uh, self-care is through being quiet, is quieting our minds. You can quiet your mind with med traditional meditation, but you can quiet it by, by taking a walk outside. You can quiet it by doing certain exercises like Tai Chi, with its intentional movement or yoga. Quieting our minds is extremely important in our uh, physical and spiritual uh, well-being. And the other category that we talk about in self-care is emotional. I already alluded to the fact that if you exercise, you can reduce your anxiety. It's important to take time for yourself. Sometimes we think that it's selfish to do this kind of self-care when we're so busy with other things, but they're really, um, we can oftentimes find time in our lives to per perform these self-care rituals uh, to improve our, our health and well-being. It's important to 
uh, have clear communication and recognizing uh, our own needs, uh, our own emotional needs when we communicate with others so that we can have these kind of positive relationships. So that's a brief summary of the kinds of self-care practices that we can engage in that improve our, qu our quality of life by making our bodies healthier and uh, our psychological and spiritual beings healthier. So now I'd like to talk a few minutes about how to incorporate this into our busy lives. The first and foremost is to recognize the importance to our physical, spiritual, and emotional health. And if we know this connection, we can take the time and intention to incorporate this into the fabric uh, of our lives. So it's critical to really recognize that this is as important to our health as going to a doctor and getting cancer checkups and other things that you might, might attend to. A common complaint is that there's not enough time. People say, I'm busy with family and friends and jobs, and how can I take the time for myself to do it? Well, I think that most of us realize that there is time. Think how much time you might spend scrolling on your phone and watching TV and being on your computer. Unfortunately or unfortunately, our phones can tell us how much time, screen time we're spending on our phones. And uh, it can be hours a day and not recognize it. So one recommendation is to significantly cut down on the screen time that you have and use that time to promote your own self-care. It doesn't have to be with yourself, it can be with other people. So we, we have the time if we recognize it and make it. Now, you don't have to start with everything at once. So my recommendation would be to start with baby steps. Start with one practice that you want to do to improve your own health by, by promoting self-care. It could be anything. Start and do it and see how it goes. And you can sequentially add other uh, uh, components later on, later on and, and sooner uh, or later you will be devoting yourself to your self-care. It is not selfish. It is, makes you better able to cope with whatever comes up. Self-care is an underappreciated way to promote our own health. And whether it's uh, physical, spiritual, or emotional self-care, they're all important. And we need to take the time to promote these. It's not selfish. It makes us uh, healthier, more pleasant to be around, <laughs> and, uh, con and uh, contributes to our, not only our own well-being, but to the community's well-being and how we interact with the, the members of our, our community affects not only how we feel, but how the people around us feel. If we're centered and balanced in our body and mind and spirit, then we have better relationships. There's, there's less anger and rancor and, and arguing with, with, uh, with with our close friends and family. We tend to listen more. And if we listen more, we understand different points of view so we're not quick to judge. So in that way, uh, it's, it's taking care of ourselves. But because we live in a community, it's taking care of the community. And, and think what would happen if everybody lead, led their lives like this how much more pleasant it would be to live in our, in, our, in our lives. I've enjoyed talking to you today about the importance of self-care in this beautiful environment in Dutton Island, which is a real treasure in Atlantic Beach. I hope I've inspired you to think about your own health, uh, to take the time 
and make the effort necessary to improve your health. And I'm confident that if you do, um, you will lead a healthier and happier life. But please, don't beat yourself up. Start slow, engage in healthy behaviors, and they will become contagious.